Hey! Hi! How you doing? This is the Gamertron, and welcome back to the Gamertron Show. Who likes crazy creative characters? Who likes a large variety of crazy creative characters? Who likes having a large variety of crazy creative characters in a video game and having them all playable? The answers to all those questions are me, myself, and I. Which is one of the many reasons I love Battleborn. And with 25 different playable crazy creative characters, everyone's gonna have their favorites. And while I for the most part like all the characters to a degree, I can't help but have my personal favorites, which is what I am here to share with you today. My top 5 favorite characters from Battleborn. Let's get started. Number 5, Oscar Mike. Yes, yes, I know, he fills the role of the generic first-person shooter soldier character. Battleborn has way more creative and unique characters to play as. But I can't help myself, I enjoy good first-person shooter mechanics, and Oscar Mike has that. More importantly, however, Oscar Mike's personality. He's extremely energetic, a little bit crazy, and my god, does this attacker, clone soldier from the UPR, know his memes. Famous action movie quotes, to internet memes, to popular hyperbolic online cliche callouts. Oscar Mike is just a joy to listen to, especially if you're experienced in gaming and internet culture. However, moving on to more importantly, his gameplay. Oscar Mike is equipped with a typical automatic assault rifle that does surprisingly really high amounts of damage, has a good base magazine clip size, reload speed, and fire rate. While he doesn't have a secondary attack per se, he is one of the very few characters in the game that can actually aim down sights for, of course, more accurate shots. Oscar Mike's abilities are Stealth Generator and Frag Grenade. One ability pretty conventional for the typical soldier, the other one? A bit of an interesting choice. With Frag Grenade, it's what you expect. You aim at a certain area, and within an area of effect, the grenade detonates, dealing damage to nearby enemies. But of course, like with all Battleborn, it can be uniquely modified as you level up to leave an incendiary area of effect that damages enemies as they walk through it, or have that grenade explode into several mini-grenades. Needless to say, Frag Grenade is an extremely useful ability for taking on tough opponents or a large group of opponents. That little extra firepower when your assault rifle just isn't enough. Oscar Mike's other ability, Stealth Generator, which is an interesting choice to give him, cloaks Oscar Mike and makes him well invisible for a certain period of time, giving you options for retreating, flanking the enemy, or giving yourself a momentary breather. And Stealth Generator, of course, can be modified as you level up to perhaps, for example, immediately have your shields start recharging if they're down and when you enter stealth. Or perhaps significantly increase your movement speed when cloaked. Needless to say, it's a very good combo to cloak and then get the drop on your enemy with the frag grenade. Leading up to Oscar Mike's ultimate ability, Airstrike. It's your typical deal a ton of damage in a large area of effect kind of ability. You mark an area, it gets barraged by missiles. Heavily damaging, but for the most part, outright killing everyone in that facility. Vicinity. But Airstrike gets some very unique changes and additions when you hit max level. At max level, Airstrike can be transformed into a giant space laser that does damage in a smaller area of effect but does way more damage. Or have the Airstrike drop on top of and follow you. Needless to say, those options at max level turn Oscar Mike's ultimate ability from a decent one to a devastating one. What else can I say? I enjoy playing as Oscar Mike. He has a good combination of abilities, solid first person shooter mechanics, and an incredibly entertaining personality. He may not be the most creative of the bunch, but he certainly is fun. Number 4, Whiskey Foxtrot. Yes, yes, I know, out of all the characters, I chose the second, more atypical first-person shooter character. But again, sorry to repeat myself, I can't help it. I like good first-person shooter mechanics, and Whiskey Foxtrot has that, but with a few interesting twists. Very offensive and brutal and badass twists. Whiskey Foxtrot, like Oscar Mike, is a former clone soldier of the UPR, but he is the sole survivor of a defective, crazy bunch of clone soldiers. And while the craziness certainly shows, why he survived also shows as well, because he's a total crazy badass and has incredible skills with the ladies. Ooh, what are you doing after the mission? I'm totally going to survive. 
date Ms. Andy. We plan to not talk about your heroic sacrifice. Aye. Help me in. She was convinced to go out on a date with this guy. Gotta be the purple pecs. Ladies love the purple pecs. Moving on to gameplay. Whiskey Foxtrot is equipped with a tactical burst fire rifle. With decent damage, decent accuracy, but with a bit of a slow fire rate and a slightly long reload. He is also again one of the very few characters in the game who doesn't have a secondary attack, but instead aims down sights. Now both of Whiskey Tango's abilities. Focus on dealing damage to enemies in a certain way. Sticky Bomb, well it's a sticky bomb. Unlike Oscar Mike's Fry grenade, which either instantly detonates or flops around a bit, Whiskey Tango Sticky Bomb, or Sticky Bombs, because as you level up and mod it, you could have more than one Sticky Bomb. The Sticky Bomb does, well, what its name implies. It sticks to enemies and surfaces on the environment, which can be great for dealing damage to a specific foe or damaging multiple foes. The Sticky Bomb can also be upgraded so that if it sticks to an enemy, it slows them down. Like I said earlier, you can fire multiple Sticky Bombs. It's a decent ability when you first start the match, but as you level up and get stronger, that Sticky Bomb becomes an ability to be reckoned with. Zever ability Scrap Cannon fires a shotgun-like spread of shrapnel, damaging and, if modded via leveling up, slowing down and dealing damage to enemies over time. So another decent damage dealing ability to start out with, but as you level up and get stronger, it becomes extremely deadly to both single and multiple targets. Which is what I really like about Whiskey Foxtrot's abilities, is that they can both be used simultaneously to either deal a ton of damage to a group of enemies or a single difficult enemy. They both accomplish the same goal, kill stuff, but they kill stuff in different ways. Speaking of killing stuff, Whiskey Foxtrot's ultimate, Overdrive, transforms his tactical rifle into an auto-firing machine gun. It's incredibly badass, satisfying, and holy hell does it do some damage. This rogue attacker goes out of his way to make sure you know he's not like the rest, but he certainly is the best at what he does. Now here's a character I had no idea that I would like as much as I do. Number three, Orendi. When I first saw Battleborn, when I first saw the gameplay, when I first saw Orendi, I was pretty meh and uninterested with the character. But after playing as her, taking a closer look at her, and hearing her wonderful dialogue, she's now become one of my favorites. This batshit insane rogue chaos witch for some reason just stands out amongst all the other characters. With her very unique, original, and clever design, her surprisingly very effective and very fun abilities, and the fact that she's voiced by Ashley Birch, Miss Birch being the voice of Tiny Tina from Borderlands 2, and Chloe Price from Life is Strange. So I instantly love her voice. And I know this is just me, and I know this is going to sound incredibly creepy, but for some bizarre reason, I find Orendi very cute. I mean, she's scary as hell and badass, but for some reason, I also find her very cute. There is definitely something wrong with me. Anyways, gameplay. Her primary attack is called Chaos Bolt, firing one ranged projectile from each of her hands one at a time. That does decent damage. Her secondary attack, however, has her using all of her hands and firing four Chaos Bolts at once. Needless to say, doing significantly more damage but at a slower fire rate. Now, Orendi's two abilities, Nullify and Shadow Pillar, have really good synergy with one another. As a matter of fact, they're built around synergizing with one another. As as her unique passive ability is that as she uses her ability Nullify, it decreases the cooldown timer for Shadow Pillar. As for the abilities themselves, Nullify unleashes a quick burst of energy, damaging any enemies in front of her and propelling her backwards. Needless to say, this ability is good for a damage boost or getting out of an unwanted situation. Once Arendi levels up and you mod Nullify, it becomes all the more deadlier and effective, such as being able to leave a trail of fire from where you activated Nullify up to blinding and stunning enemies for duration of time. Now, her more damaging and impactful ability, Shadow Pillar, is a highly 
damaging area of effect ability. And when I say highly damaging, I mean highly damaging. This ability may actually to some extent even do more damage than her ultimate. Shadow Pillar is that good of an ability, and once leveled up and modded, Shadow Pillar just becomes all the more badass. Having it slow down enemies, deal damage over time, and even summon another Shadow Pillar that does less damage right after the first Shadow Pillar. Needless to say, using Nullify and Shadow Pillar in combination with one another can devastate enemies. Finally, her ultimate ability, Paradigm Shift, is, well, essentially... Basically a long-ranged, fast-moving, line-of-sight nuke. And while honestly, I don't consider this ability as powerful as other characters' ultimate abilities, it is, however, another great ability to use in synergy and in combination with Nullify and Shadow Pillar to deal the max amount of damage to an enemy. Very good for lined up groups of mooks trying to swarm you, or taking down a chunk of health from a boss. Overall, I didn't expect I would like Arendi as much as I do, but I really like Arendi. Number two, Kelvin. Yes, his name is Kelvin. This monstrous, imposing, intimidating, mystical alien ice golem's name is Kelvin. I cannot help but absolutely adore that. I also really like just how chill Kelvin's personality is. Eh, you see what I did there? He's an ice golem and he's chill. Moving on. Kelvin's primary attack is melee swipes and punches with his claw and fist hand, dealing a decent amount of damage at a decent speed. But Kelvin's secondary attack has him taking his giant ice fist and just slamming it into the ground, dealing area of effect and knockback damage on enemies. Very useful if you're getting swarmed or you briefly want to stun a heavy enemy. Kelvin's first ability, Sublimate, has him transform into this ethereal cloud-like form, making him temporarily invincible, greatly increasing his movement speed. And when touching enemies in this form, stuns and damages them. Needless to say, this is a great ability for retreating, flanking, being offensive, defensive. This ability, just a ton of benefits, can be a real lifesaver. Kelvin's other ability, Chomp, is what it sounds like. He just takes a big old bite of whatever happens to be closest to his jaws, dealing a large amount of damage, regaining some health, and it has the very beneficial bonus of instantly killing minor small enemies. Now Kelvin's ultimate is very situational. Ice Wall, well, creates a wall of ice. While it does stun nearby enemies, it doesn't really do any damage. The usefulness from Ice Wall comes in using it defensively, getting swarmed by enemies, want to separate certain enemies from one another. You want to defend an objective. In those regards, in those situations, Ice Wall can be a lifesaver. Overall, I just really like Kelvin. I really enjoy playing as Kelvin. His melee combat is very fun, combining his primary, secondary attacks, sublimate and chomp abilities, comboing all those together makes for some pretty fun and entertaining melee combat. All of his abilities and attacks either damage or stun enemies. I also just like how he can fill a variety of roles, be it tank, attacker, or defense. And again, just really like his design. The whole ice golem thing, the giant skull face, the crystal, spikes all over him. I just really like Kelvin. He's a real cool guy. Ah, see what I did there? He's, he's an ice golem, and I said he was cool. <laughs> uh, moving on. And my number one favorite character from Battleborn is... Caldarius. Caldarius is just awesome. He has an awesome, badass design, an awesome, badass voice, and just awesome, badass attacks, weapons, and abilities. His primary weapon is his TMP, which is essentially an SMG. It does good damage, has decent accuracy, and a high as hell fire rate, and a very fast reload speed to boot. His secondary attack is his wrist-mounted energy blade, which has him effectively engage in melee combat. Right off the bat, that's one thing I already really like about Caldarius. He has both effective options for ranged combat and melee combat, and comboing, synergizing the two together makes him a deadly, versatile powerhouse and I haven't even gone to his abilities yet. Starting off, we have his passive ability, essentially jump thrusters, giving Caldarius a second jump or dash in the air that you can use and go in any direction. Needless to say, this gives him some very useful extra mobility in combat and traversal. Now, Caldarius' first ability, Gravitic Burst, I didn't think of much at first, thought it was pretty meh, but the more I've used it, 
the more I see its usefulness and benefits. Gravitic Burst just has you lunge forward and deal damage if you impact an enemy while lunging forward. However, this ability can actually be used effectively for retreating, flanking, or engaging enemies in melee combat. Activate Gravitic Burst, lunge at an enemy, deal some opening damage, and then immediately follow up with your energy blade. Caldarius' next ability, Flashbang, well, fires a Flashbang grenade at a certain range with a certain area of effect. But through leveling up and modding, Flashbang becomes absolutely fucking deadly, such as adding the options for it to deal damage over time or for you to fire free Flashbangs in a row or even spawn mini grenades after the Flashbang detonates. And because it's a Flashbang, it of course blinds enemies, and you can blind a large amount of enemies including stunning bosses. Flashbang is just a really good ability. And then finally we have Caldarius's ultimate. And while it's nothing particularly special, it's an area of effect dealing a ton of damage ability. The thing about Aerial Assault is just how badass it is. Caldarius jets into the air, aims at a target area, and then Thruster Boosted slams into the ground creating a massive area of effect explosion, dealing a ton of damage. It may not be the most unique ability, it may not even be the most damage dealing ultimate, but I'll be damned if it doesn't look awesome. Overall, I friggin' love Caldarius. He's a ton of fun to play as. He's very versatile with his attacks, with his movement, with his abilities. He's great in both PvE and PvP. His design, his character, his lore, all of it exhumes badassery. As awesome and as badass as all 25 playable characters in Battleborn are, my favorite has to be Caldarius. Anyways, that's been a video. If you liked the video in any way, shape, or form, please hit the like button. Hitting the like button helps you, helps me, helps everybody involved with the video. If you hit the like button, please leave a comment. What are your thoughts, feelings, and opinions, and your favorite Battleborn? Let me know in the comment section below. I love reading comments. Again, near enough comments, please leave a comment. If you want to help out and support this video, then please share it on social media, Twitter, and Facebook. If you want to help out and support me directly, then please consider pledging and becoming a patron on my Patreon. Anyways, guys, that's been a video, and I will see you all later.